All right. Hello and welcome everybody. So my name is Martha Alter Hines and I have great honor and great pleasure to welcome you to this second soul wisdom circle with a group of beautiful, amazing women and yourselves. Um, so the women who are here include, well, are <laughs> Don Brunke, Melanie Reinhardt, Anne Baring, Kelly Hunter, Maura McBratney, Heather Ensworth, Julia Balaz, and myself. And um, so you might have seen the first Soul Wisdom circle that we recorded in December. And if you haven't, definitely highly recommend going back and watching that. But what you might remember is that we, um, in that video, we were talking about the theme of ourselves as lighthouses and how we're all lighthouses and we are all here, you included, as beings who are in some way holding light, sparking light, and holding the presence of the divine in this time of transition. So in this gathering, the theme that we're going to be focused on is similar, but a, a slight difference. Um, so we're going to be talking today about the fact that we are making, you know, lots of us feel that we're making this major transition from what some of us astrologers talk about as being the moving from the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius. But in one way or another, a lot of us feel this call to be part of the shift of our world. And when we're making a shift, such a big shift, it's really easy. I can speak for myself to be focused on where we're going and the new that we're heading into. And what we're going to be dropping into partly today is not only the where we're going, but the gifts of where we're coming from. So some of us are going to speak about maybe the gifts and the transition that we're making that we're bringing from the age of Pisces and, and that transition we're making from the age of Pisces. And some of us will be talking a little more broadly about just the gifts that are with us inevitably as we even make that change and make that move. Um, Cause I think it's really easy to forget that when we're moving into something new that we, you know, we want that new thing, but, we actually already are, we're building on so much that has come before and that's already present here. So in various ways, that's going to be the theme. But um, before we begin, so Julia is going to be facilitating today. Heather facilitated last time. And as we mentioned last time, each time we meet in the circle, a different one of us is going to be facilitating. And one of the reasons we are we're holding the circle in that way is to really emphasize the reality that every single one of us has a beauty, a deep wisdom, and a particular medicine that's moving through each of us. So Heather, as we all know, is wonderful and beautiful and amazing. And she led the circle last time and it was incredible, right? So Julia's way is going to be different from Heather's way. And it's also going to be beautiful and amazing <laughs> and wonderful. And same goes for every single one of you. So with that, I would really love to invite you to join us in this circle. I want you to feel present in whatever way feels right for you. Because again, the purpose of this is that we are all all over the all over the world we are all needed our voices are all needed and the the love and the medicine of each of us is crucial so we'd love to just officially invite you to bring yourself present into the circle with us and thank you so much for joining us julia Thank you, dear Martha, for creating this beautiful space mm -hmm. when we come together and share our love and reflections with each other. 
and the world that we draw in, in this co-creation. It is an honor for me to be here with you all. I have such deep respect for each one of you here. Every time I take time to look in any of your directions, I feel deeply inspired by your life's contribution. So thank you for being exactly as you are. Thank you for your generous heart. And thank you, Martha, for inviting me to guide this beautiful circle into sacred space as we record this and extending this invitation to all those who feel guided to join in and sit with us. I welcome you all. And as all great shamans and great enlightened masters say, every moment is sacred. We are always in ceremony. So let us welcome this moment as a reminder of that. Heather, during your last circle, during our last circle, you brought in the four archangels, Archangel Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, Uriel, as guardians of the four directions, the east, north, west, south, along, along with the four royal stars, Antares, Aldebaran, Bomohold, and Regulus. You anchored the four pillars in the medicine wheel to invoke the sacred space in our community. Thank you for that. And I invite anyone who didn't get a chance to watch our last gathering to find the replay of it on our channels and take time to receive the wisdom and love there. And as Martha was saying, we talked about what it means to be the lighthouse in stormy times. So this team continues. And today we are at another important layer to our circle of wisdom. But before that, I'll open the space for our conversation. Let's invoke the sacred space within and all around us again. So what came strongly for me today is embracing the loving presence of Divine Mother and Divine Father archetypes that are here to support us in holding the sacred space with us. They stand with us as we come together to share our experiences in a safe and nourishing way. So I would like to invite you to close your eyes and open your heart. Let's take a deep breath, feeling deep appreciation for the gift of the breath, breath of life, letting it expand our sacred heart space. Exhaling, relaxing into peaceful awareness of what is as being perfect. Continue with deep, long inhale and exhale cycles while holding our awareness in our higher heart. That mighty, energetical space in our chest that can generate so much love and healing prayer energy. The moment we think about someone we deeply care about Feel the love and light energy from within your sacred heart and expand the sacred energy field as far and wide as possible. Let it envelop not only your entire body, but the entire earth. Let us take a moment to deeply care about the Mother Earth, Mother Nature, the Great Mother, admiring her perfect embodiment of the archetype of Divine Feminine, of Divine Mother. In deep appreciation, we recognize her great wisdom her strength in holding space for all her children, a vast variety of species, 
infinite perspectives and experiences, giving us the freedom to choose and experience the consequences of our individual and collective choices. Thank you, Great Mother. May we remember ourselves as her children, knowing ourselves as one with the Great Mother. She's us and we are her. May we breathe in the willpower and determination to stand stronger than ever in these times of corrupted behaviors that go against what is natural, organic, and sacred. May we commit more than ever to protecting and standing for what is natural, organic, and pure. May we choose to answer the call, individually and collectively, to have courage at the pinnacle moment of our hero's journey, when we are about to discover the treasure chest inside our temple. May we embrace the challenges that are here to awaken our true nature. We open to our natural ability to create miracles through the power of pure love and sacred prayer. May we accept the responsibility for being an inspiration for others who are yet to remember. May we embody only what is natural, birth only what is of pure love, May we hold peace and allow for joyful creativity in alignment with nature's well-being. Thank you, Great Mother. We stand with you. Now, as we recognize the essence of the Great Mother living within our being and in our world, let us also honor and embrace Divine Father, Divine Masculine, the sacred form and organic divine templates and structure that co-creates the sacred space for Divine Feminine to birth and express her creation. Thank you, Great Father, for standing with us for guiding us, for encouraging us to recognize the importance of healthy organic structures in our life, for holding boundaries where they are needed, for stepping into our sovereign nature, especially in these challenging times. We recognize that you are in us and we are in you. We are one. We recognize the sacred trinity of our united being, holding infinite potential. Thank you, Great Father. We stand with you. Let us now hold a vision of the sacred seed anchored in our sacred heart. Witness it growing into a sacred tree, with its roots spreading wide and deep into Mother Earth's heart space. Appreciating her nourishing infinite love coming through the roots up into our entire being. We are calling in and honoring all the great love and wisdom 
of all our ancestors that walked this earth before us. We thank them for holding this sacred space with us. Thank you, all our ancestors. We stand with you. Now, spreading our sacred tree's crown far and wide into the cosmic space of infinite intelligence, embracing our connection with the grandfather sky. We hold witness as he showers our being with particles of light that are packed with infinite wisdom. We call in and honor all the love and great wisdom of our ancestors coming from the stars in our Milky Way galaxy and beyond. We thank them for holding this sacred space with us. Thank you, our star family. We stand with you. In our unity, we are safe and we know it, we feel it. May we remember this collective love and light as our supportive, nourishing, encouraging presence in every moment going forward as we continue our journey through these transformational times of great initiation, the great awakening, the great remembering of our true essence that is pure and mighty. And so it is. You can open your eyes in your own time, feeling fully present in your wonderful body, in your sacred space, in the here and now. Welcome. So as we mentioned before, in our last gathering, we all shared about what it means to be a lighthouse in stormy times. And today, as we record this, astrologically speaking, in a tropical zodiac, we have the Sun, Venus, Saturn, and Neptune in Pisces. Mm -hmm. While the Sun, Venus, and Saturn are also aligned with stars in the constellation of Aquarius. And along with that, if you look at the sidereal astrology, our collective lunar node is still in Pisces. So this feels like an ideal time to talk about how we see integrating the gifts of the age of Pisces, including clearing the shadow aspects of Pisces in order to move into the age of Aquarius in a more balanced and integrated way. And as Heather was suggesting so beautifully in our earlier emails exchange, for example, how do we open to honoring the sacredness of all of life and our mystical ways of knowing? So I invite us all, including the viewers who may feel called to share in the comment, you know, let us know about your highs and lows of the age of Pisces. What have we learned from it? And what can we bring forward that can support us in navigating the new era that is upon us? So, dear Heather, I'll uh, approach you first. Would you like to have the honor to be the first to share your reflections and your offering today? Welcome. Thank you, Julia, for that beautiful opening and meditation, very profound. 
And it's an honor to be with all of you today and all of the community of those who are present and listening and a part of this process with us. And as I reflect on this transition that we're in, that is so profound as we're in this time of transmutation into new ways of being, into new ways of understanding ourselves as we shift into the age of Aquarius. I do feel it's important to hold with incredible gratitude the deeper gifts and wisdom of the age of Pisces. Even though in these past 2000 years, we've gotten out of balance with it in many ways, or experience the shadow sides of it. As we're now in this transition, I think we are getting support from the stars and the planets to drop into that deeper knowing of the gifts and wisdom of the age of Pisces. And as I meditated on that and reflected on that, part of what came to me is that awareness that the age of Pisces reminds us of the mystical roots that are at the core of every religious tradition. And those mystical roots are that knowing that we are a part of the oneness of all that is. We are each a fractal expression of the sea of cosmic consciousness. But when we absorb and take in that wisdom of Pisces, that we are all one, then we come into that unity consciousness. Pisces helps us dissolve our egos and our sense of separation to remember that we're all interconnected with each other and with all that is. And Pisces reminds us of the sacredness of the waters and the consciousness of water, which Veda Austin and others are helping us to remember. And as we honor the sacredness of the waters, we realize in a literal sense, we are all a part of that sea of cosmic consciousness. At the molecular level, we are 99% water. Our planet is mostly water. There is water in the cosmos. Even the stars that are primarily hydrogen are the spirit of water, hydrogen. We are all a part of that oneness. And that allows us to open again to the wisdom and love that surrounds us and is within us so that we can expand our consciousness and open our hearts more fully to the compassion of Pisces that we can hold for ourselves and emanate out to others. And when we truly realize we are all one, then we are, we are pulled into reverence and gratitude and honoring of the sacredness of all of life around us and the sacredness of each other. So I hold with great gratitude the wisdom of the age of Pisces, how it can support us in this transition, and the awareness that the sun is in the stars of Pisces until April 20th and will be emanating that energy for us to absorb and take in. And even the powerful total solar eclipse that in the chart has a stellium in Aries, in the sky, that stellium is in the stars of Pisces, supporting us to remember to absorb that, to come back into that knowing of our oneness with the sea of cosmic consciousness 
and that that wisdom and love are within us and all around us. Blessed be. Thank you. So beautiful. Melanie, welcome. Would you like to be the second in offering your perspective and your guidance? Thank you, Julia. And thank you to Martha for, for kind of shepherding us all together and collecting us to express part of what's happening for all of us in this time of transition. While reviewing the theme of transition, specifically between Pisces and Aquarius, many things came to mind, as I'm sure they probably did for all of you. But then eventually, by a serendipity, I sort of landed on the final paragraph of Dane, Dane Rujar's um, major work called The Astrology of Personality. Wow. And the chapter is entitled The Use of Astrology. And as a nice little anecdote, just want to introduce this by saying that I received from astrologer Eric Francis a scanned copy of the frontispiece of his copy of that very same book. And that scan informs us that Dane Rudyard was a friend of Alice Bailey and a beautiful inscription I'll read for Alice Bailey. This book is sent in deep friendship and in the hope that it will fill the purpose which called it forth into being. And as I read that, um, thinking ahead of our meeting, I suddenly had this kind of a vision of, you know, all down the ages and including now, and no doubt in the future, there will be little groups of people gathering under their own impulse. In other words, they're not belonging to a specific organization or church or anything like that but gathering together in friendship to share what arises, you know. And that felt like so, so delicious. And that that is a kind of a tradition in itself. And if I would give it a label, which, you know, won't do really, but I think of this as the hermetic way. It is very secret, but not because there's anything to hide it's just that it comes about through people listening inwardly not through not through obeying the diktats of an organization and so forth you know and I sort of reveled in that and then I came across Dane Rudyard I sometimes think uh, for me well for me anyway no matter how many times I read my favorite books by Rudyard, there's always something new, something that I've forgotten, something that I never even noticed the first time round. I don't remember reading this paragraph before, and I just, it brought tears to my eyes, so I'll share it with you. May the power of the creative now illumine our every moment with significance, exclamation mark. Indeed, there is beauty and meaning in every moment. Because in every moment, the individual may reach integration and joy that is creative, that brings forth new cycles and affirms towards the unknown the noble will to destiny. The skies above are no more radiant 
the form of constellations no more luminous and revealing than is the realization within our deepest selfhood that we are whole, that in wholeness which is creative, everything that is and ever will be is fulfilled in the now. Oh, indeed, now all is beautiful. The whole is beautiful. And that last sentence is full of capital letters and exclamation marks and so forth. And that's the very that's the very end of the book. Uh, so that's what kind of landed in my path, and I thought, oh, I can't wait to share that with everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So nourishing. Thank you, Melanie. Thank you. Anne, welcome. Welcome into the circle, and I'm curious to hear your offering, your reflections on the theme we proposed. Did you mean me, Julia? Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, I gave a talk two days ago to the Aleph Trust on divine wisdom and the Holy Spirit and the lost feminine dimension of God. And I said it would be my last talk, probably won't, but it, <laughs> I always say it will be. But really, I was um, deeply distressed, obviously, like all of us, by what's happening in the world. And I thought, how have we fallen so far that we don't realize anything to do with the need for connecting all the time with the transcendent, that we're completely mm. forgotten that there is such a thing as the transcendent. And this is what I was speaking about to begin with, and I was showing slides from Ukraine and from Gaza, and just asking, how have we fallen so far? And I compared it really where we are now with where we were 3,000 years ago in the Trojan War, and that we've made no progress whatsoever morally. And our weapons have become far more powerful. But we're still fighting in the same way as we did 3,000 years ago. And I think this is utterly, utterly tragic. So that I think that there's a great need now to bring together the two dimensions of the above and the below, so that the below is once again at one with the above, and I've been reading a wonderful book on the Gnostics, which I can tell you about later, and how really I think that's what we are, all of us here at this moment. We are Gnostics, remembering what we once knew and bringing it out for our time in whatever way we have been led to as creative elements of the universe. And I think it's vitally important that the message gets out, with, which is what Julia and um, Heather have been saying, that we are all one, because this is absolutely not occurring to anybody in our materialist culture, and the young in particular have no sense of what the meaning of their life is. There's nothing to tell them what there is in the way of meaning. So there's a huge gap between what we perhaps know and what the culture is, as it were, fixated in, having no knowledge of what it's missing. So I was really explaining where we lost the feminine in two different places. One was in 623 BCE in Jerusalem, where Yahweh lost his divine partner. And she was literally excised from Judaism which was an absolute tragedy. And the second excision was in the fourth century at the Council of Nicaea, when the Holy Spirit became holy male and lost the ancient feminine um, dimension, really, or what she was called. The Holy Spirit was always feminine in the Greek world and in the Jewish world prior to that uh, happening in 623 BC. 
So I was just giving people the time to reflect on all this and what the impact has been, because in cutting ourselves away from the divine feminine, we lost touch with nature, and that's where the split came in, the dissociation between spirit and nature came in, so that we came, in the end, to not know what we belong to <laughs> at all, and how to bring together these two separate aspects of ourselves, the above and the below, and to reunite them in one sacred whole. And I think this is what all our work is about, I'm not an astrologer myself, unfortunately, not having had the time to devote to that. But um, I feel definitely guided in what I'm doing, and as we all are, I think. But I think we need, or I need, to do more to communicate with the young and to communicate with um, on a more um, conscious way with everything that is around me, really. But there isn't, for me, there isn't much time. I'm trying to finish this book on the Holy Spirit, which is the talk that I gave was all about that, to regain the feminine aspect of the Holy Spirit so that the divine feminine, the divine masculine are reunited in the sacred marriage, which was always the great ceremony in the ancient civilizations in Egypt and Sumer, in Greece as well. Uh, with Zeus and, and Hera, the sacred marriage was the theme of those cultures. And that's why, how they kept in touch with the above, so to speak, in the ceremony once a year, which reunited the above and the below in the sacred marriage. So I think that's really all I would like to contribute. It, um, I shall go on with my work. I feel surrounded by people in my room, <laughs> presence, of people who are with us, as Martha said. And I'm just very um, privileged to be in this group and passing on what I know in the way that I have just now and listening to the wisdom that comes through all of you, which is a great blessing, a really great blessing and something that the world needs desperately. And now, it needs it now. So I'll stop there. Thank you. Thank you. So illuminating, clarifying, awakening perspective. Thank you, Anne. Maura, welcome to the circle and may you please share your perspective, your guidance. First, I'd like to say, Julia, a beautiful, beautiful meditation opening. So thank you for that. And um, I'm honored to be in the circle of these women. And now you want me to follow these three. That's pretty funny. But, you know, I'll do my best. <laughs> um, e each one that's spoken already has touched um, things that have been swirling in my life for a long time. And... Um, they're so said and said so eloquently of Heather and Melanie and and Anne. When I was reflecting about this theme, um, I'm not an astrologer either, but um, although I, I like astrology, but I, I was taken back to what I did for many many years, which was study with a man named Brew Joy, who is a doctor who left medicine to um, do transformational work. And and it was uh, uh, we were ga we gathered in circles and we just wanted to see what wanted to happen. I mean, basically that was it. There's some kind of theme, but it was both deep in psychological work, mostly based on Jungian kinds of things. But the essence of his teaching was always to cultivate and come back to the heart center, because that's where. We are at our at, in a human form. It's where we can ameliorate and bring all the different energies together and hold them so that they're not fighting each other, the masculine, the feminine, the body, the soul, um, you know, seemingly opposite pieces can be ameliorated at the heart center if it's cultivated. And I follow that through the years because when there's be, be times when I'm like, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And I'll go, go to the heart center. 
And in that, he gave us four attributes of the heart center. One is unconditional love. Healing presence, which is the ability to let go and to regenerate. Innate harmony, which is the peace that surpasses all understanding and the calm in the midst of the storm. And of course, compassion. And I found that as I've continued to follow those and, and, and to bring them into my being as being part of how I relate to the world, a lot of things um, can be held mm -hmm. and, and, um, and honored, even if they're not to my personal, my personality's liking them. You know, there's broader things going here. And in that way, I think we are connected to everything. I think when we have, it's bringing the above and the below into the center of our being. And um, and it's where I feel my ma masculine and feminine come together in sacred marriage. Um, so I, I think it brings peace. And I think as we connect at the heart center, I have friends that we follow that kind of, that I, I don't see them for years, but we're always connected. We always have a connection and I never feel like, oh, I haven't seen them for a long time. Somehow we're connected and it's being informed. You know, we're informing each other. And when we get together, go, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, it's, it's, so if there's, it, it's, it's a more practical than some, you know, but I, I find that being practical things help uh, center and embody so that that way you can go and kind of travel into the, the other dimensions with a, with a more ease. So I guess that would be what I would offer today. So thank you. Thank you. So relevant and true. It's the love that connects us and it has no boundaries. No. Connects with time I, and space. I, I would like, yes. I would like to add one more thing. I, that What I've found is also it connects us. It's no time and space. It connects us to the other realms, uh, you know, with spirits that, people that have left. I have major communication mm -hmm. with my husband who died, but I really believe that the love that was developed and cultivated between us that allows that to happen. So the dimensions are all together, not not separate. Thank you. It's like the dial-in um, yeah. process. Just <laughs> yeah. tune into yeah. love. Exactly. exactly, exactly. Thank you. Yeah. Kelly. So nice to have you here. Welcome. Would you like to share your ponderings and your guide? I love guide? the weaving of the circle. I love the weaving of the circle. Um, uh, I just returned from visiting my sister who is uh, in a hospice care situation. And I'm just filled with a level of 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 sadness and of the of the letting go and the grief of our times in this personal you know we all have our own personal situation or reflection of the transformation of the collective and already the words transition transmutation transcendent I'll add transformation and I was thinking about all these words that because I'm I'm working a lot with Pluto who's going from Capricorn into Aquarius whereas we're talking today about the Pisces Aquarius combination and uh, the word transfiguration came to me yesterday and I wasn't sure what that meant. I'm not well studied in the Bible, but I uh, have come to, you know, through the divine mother who's been very present for me more strongly than ever in the last year or so, a couple of years or so, always. But, you know, there's that personal engagement on a more, Mm, daily basis, let us say. And lost that thread. <laughs> Where am I? So um, 
So I um I'm I I've been coming to realize that 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 Jesus was here to teach about the divine mother. And his teachings are all about the love and compassion and being in our hearts. And that the transfiguration is a story that I'm not terribly familiar with, where there's an apparition of Jesus on the mountain. Three of his disciples were present. And during this apparition, um, Moses and Elijah also appeared in the field and Jesus was transfigured with light, a radiant light. Uh, so I looked up, what does transfiguration mean? And, and this happened sometime, you know, I think maybe around this time of year. I'm not really sure if anybody here knows more about that than I do, but the the this because I this is very new to me, but feels so relevant. That is the word that came to me yesterday when I was thinking about joining with you all in this circle and in the wider circle that's that's tuning in. So it means a marked change in form and appearance. Uh, especially in a spiritual or glorifying way, a metamorphosis, like the butterfly we think about being a cocoon and all melted in a messy way and becoming something more, something truly more uh, uh, um, essential to what is meant almost like the butterfly is coming into its sovereignty, which I love that word too. And I think that it's important to enter an age. If we're entering Aquarius, we need to consider the opposite sign, which balances it out. Leah would be, to me, the high sign of sovereignty. And if we're looking at the Pisces, we need to look at the Virgo, which we talk about in terms of connecting heaven and earth. And the divine mother in her purity, giving birth to the spirit. So this transfiguration is a change that glorifies and exalts. And also is like the, the lighthouse image of being becoming this radiant light. And we are all opening to surrendering to that light coming forth. And when I was sitting with my sister, that's really what I was wanting to share that, that healing for her. Cause she's in a, she's so aware of what's going on and it's, she's so helpless. She had a stroke and she can't move part of her body and she so wants to live. She wa so wants her health back. And I know miracles are possible, but I think first is the level of surrender to the divine mother, to the, 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 the miracle of transfiguration, whether we remain in the body or not. And that, that, this is like her moment of surrender. And the be most beautiful moment was when we were looking into each other's eyes. Cause I haven't seen her for gosh, like eight years maybe. And um, we both have blue eyes. <laughs> and so there's a mirror there between her and I that, that was just so eternal in that moment. And, and the love, you know, beyond any personality issues or, you know, belief systems or lifestyles, this, this love was shared in this like maternal moment. And that's the main memory I take away. And that's also part of, you know, my personal grief of, of losing someone I've lived almost my whole life with. And we're all experiencing that in some way as people leave our lives, as our paths diverge, as 
we are opening more into the light and this is the gift this is that compassion this is is that that capacity to um for that unconditionality and that that is in our hearts it's not in our heads you know, we're educated in our heads we need to let that go you know let all those ego constructs just dissolve and experience that transfiguration of light that is bringing uh, um, an amazing change of form and appearance and that glorification. So that's that's what I want to share. And there's some art around that transfiguration because it's a major moment in the Christian story. And for a while there, um, I forget what era they were saying that that Christ was being held in a mandorla. This is an almond shape and very holy shape. We see the Virgin of Guadalupe in that in that almond shape mandorla, which is the sacred space that's formed in the sacred geometry of the Besica Pistis, which is two circles who intersect each other's centers. And when they do that, that's the sacred shape of the mandorla is formed. That's the cover of Chalice Well. That's um, that's the mandorla, which is the, the um, what the sacred space created through the divine feminine and the divine masculine in union because they can touch each other's centers and create the space together. And in order to do that, we need to be in our center. And this is, you know, to me, part of the calling of the eclipse is that 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 sacred space being created as we are engaging the divine masculine and the divine feminine. So uh, love the way that's been expressed here and that the Divine Mother is present in everything we see and in us and in all the forms and variety and beauty of nature. And the Divine Masculine is the, the infinite spaciousness of the life force, the life power. Uh, and we are we are uniting those in our our transfiguration. Oh, I'm melting here, just receiving. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. And I really want to recognize the experience of receiving everything that is shared here today, especially for the viewers. May you really feel the healing frequency of these words and the wisdom that is coming through and embracing the moments when we are just receiving and allowing rather than, you know, what we are trained into always giving and creating. Oh, thank you. Don. I, I appreciate you. Oh, may I say one more thing? Thank you, Elia. What you said about when we're in our hearts, we, we are, we are sending love to, you know, even if I'm not with my sister now, I can send that love to her and that healing energy. And thank you for that reminder. Thank you. So wonderful to see you here, Dawn. Welcome. Thank Come you. Here. Thank you. It's so, you know, this really is so deep and profound and um, heartfelt, uh, inspiring, illuminating. You know, there's a part of me, an inside part of me that's still smiling at Melanie's uh, quote about with the exclamation marks and that, that part of me that's smiling is like yeah we're all like little exclamation marks you know which are which are like the lighthouse it's a similar form to the lighthouse and we're shining these different aspects of the one which is so beautiful so let me let me share my exclamation mark <laughs> Um, I, when I was attuning to this, um, to this topic, I, um, you know, as is my uh, kind of journey, um, invited an animal group to share, to share their wisdom. 
And I was initially uh, surprised um, uh, in some ways, yet later found it entirely appropriate and perfect as to who showed up, which was Snake, the spirit of Snake. As some of you know, many years ago, I had a dream of an ancient archetypal snake. And the dream was so powerful and insistent that it inspired me to write a book about snake. And during that time, about 12 to 15 months, I came to understand snake energy is very wise, very practical, and very helpful to humanity. You know, snake was one of the earliest animals that, are, that was honored and revered by our ancestors. It was Snake who advised and protected the gods and the goddesses, royalty, shamans, medicine men and women, and seekers of truth, you know, throughout the ages. The interesting thing to me about Snake is I find that it often appears when there's imminent transformation, individually mm. and collectively. And are we not in the midst of some profound transformation? So... Let me read to you what I received from, from Snake. <clears throat> we are spirit of Snake. Thank you for inviting us to share a perspective with your group and with those listening. The topic you have been contemplating is the gift of the new age. Gifts from the old and gifts from the new. And we wish to sound a strong tone of the importance of the gift of shadow in yourselves and in the world. As almost all are aware, there is great confusion, chaos, uncertainty, fear, anger, and fear flowing anxiety in your world today. There is often vast separation between peoples, as well as between people and the earth. As you know, snake often shows up as an archetype, a teacher. When that which was once unified is separated, and needs to find its way home to harmony and wholeness. The teaching we emphasize at this time is shadow, the importance of seeing, acknowledging, and embracing your own personal shadow, as well as perceiving the group, cultural, national, and world shadow, which has become quite heavily laden with fear, quite extreme fear at this time. We suggest that shadow is not something to be feared, but rather to be seen and embraced as a strength. By moving through all that is cluttered and chaotic, you learn to clear, to find clarity in your mind and body, and to shine that clear light to others. Just as fear is contagious, so is clarity, truth, trust, love. We use human terms, to explain this very ancient and powerful observation. One of the reasons some of you find snake to be cold or frightful or even evil is because we see clearly. We are the part of you that has clear vision, clear thinking, clear knowing. And sometimes you are so far removed from this power in yourself that we feel alien to you. Yet we, our energy is also part of you. Our comment is that you may find great treasure, many gifts within your shadow as you begin to explore and accept. You are now living in accelerated times. The more you work with the frequencies of clarity, honesty, and a desire to be who you really are, the easier these tasks become. To recognize your own shadow selves or pieces of shadow in others or the world. To understand what has been misunderstood to reclaim what has been abandoned, to acknowledge what has been judged unfairly, to love that which you believe is incapable of being loved. We offer you the vision of a snake looping around itself in a figure eight, a lemnus gate, which represents the ongoing flow of life. As a species, you have been here at this crossroads of choice many times before, in different times, wearing different clothes and bodies, in different cultures with different languages and different situations. But the core challenge is the same, 
to see yourselves with clarity and love. Snake invites you to move with us fluidly, sensuously, pragmatically, intuitively, and with a deeper respect for yourselves and others, humans as well as the animals and plant beings, the elementals and the earth herself. There is a tone, a resonance that is sounding much louder on, around and within the earth today. The clearer you can allow your physical self to be, the greater you may hear and respond to this frequency. The more you may feel it moving through you and you moving through it. All of us interconnected and harmonizing in a way that brings life back into tune. With love, spirit of snake on earth. Thank you. Thank you, Dawn, and thank you to great spirit of the snake. Wisdom, consciousness. I'm so glad it made its way to the circle to enlighten us and remind us. So before I pass the word to Martha and ask her to close this beautiful circle, I want to share what is present for me around this time. So this week in particular, asteroid Hygieia is exactly, precisely conjunct my natal Mercury, which is in Pisces and in the 11th house. So what was very potent for me and what beautifully manifested is joining in sacred circle of 14 women over the last weekend. And I still feel so, you know, full and uh, grateful uh, from the experience. It was my first time where I had three days and three nights um, or, or four days and three nights coming together with just women with the intention to share space, share our vulnerabilities, listen compassionately, hold pure awareness, feel that Piscean frequency of how united we are, feel the healing that comes with compassionate awareness, peaceful presence, and also really receiving the importance of the Virgo anchoring the Piscean frequencies in our bodies. And the loudest message for me anyway was taking good care of our body taking good care of our planet and really standing stronger than ever before. I feel that's why that came into that um, prayer at the beginning of this call, deciding to really commit to only allowing what is organic, natural, what is supporting the well-being of our, of our body, whether that's through food or beverages or information or people or circle, circles really committing to that and also allowing a lot more resting time receiving time you know especially in these communities when we come together you can recognize the pattern of givers we are all givers here and over givers we've been trained to overgive and sacrifice and treasure that as something to celebrate and and worship but to what cost, to what price. Um, so I can really see how we are realizing through illness and suffering, how out of balance that was for such a long time. So, and so beautiful when we can come together in space of strong, beautifully aligned women or men, they too are awakening to realizing the sacredness of their being, their pureness in their heart. You know, how nourishing it can be when we come together in these beautiful little circles where you can take a break, when you can allow others to support you and you just witness and 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 celebrate and really just let your body rest because we need a lot of rest, I believe. Um, based on the structures that we have set in our society, we're trying to uphold them, but they're insane. They really are making us unwell so can we come up with ways 
that will truly inspire more and more people to find a better way that honors the well-being of the beautiful gift of the human body as a vessel for, for the great spirit to come true. What I also realized this weekend in that sacred circle of women was the youngest there was 23 years old. And I had such a strong prayer throughout to welcome the, the younger generation, the, the teenage daughters who are starting to connect with their intuition, with the wisdom that is awakening their bodies. Can we answer that call to start creating these beautiful spaces and maybe at first it'll be cringy for them and it'll be like nah thanks I'll pass but I believe they will soon become um, inspired by the beautiful frequency that comes from our singing together from our being together from our sharing together so um, I am um, I am committed to create more of these types of opportunities in my life when we can come together to bring healing to each other and just laugh and be silly and what I experienced also for the first time was the entire weekend there was not a single judgment on on any of these women and they really were from every walk of life it was just feeling safe in that sacred non-judgmental way there was so much healing there there is a message for those who never sat with with group that feels sacred and safe. There, there are people who grew up feeling different. There are people who grew up being bullied and they built such strong boundaries around their heart, around their natural self-expression as a result of that. And I want you to realize the difference between opening yourself up and expressing yourself in an environment that is confused, completely confused and asleep, where there is a lot of inner frustrations projected onto you, you know, when it really feels hurtful to be there. And there is a big difference between being in a space that feels sacred like this one. So maybe you can start looking for opportunities in your life choices that you maybe didn't see before before realizing this you know where in your immediate environment or online can you join in healing circles like that like this because you will start feeling safer and safer to start letting go of the boundaries that are preventing you from feeling deep love deep joy deep peace so can you start that healing journey? And uh, for many people who can't maybe afford, if there are like weekends where you have to contribute financially, there are also groups that are either by donation or many of them for free. If you go to Meetup uh, website, Meetup, there's loads of um, groups where people simply feel inspired to come together and look for that frequency of coming for the purpose of connecting with what's natural whether it's forest bathing group, whether it's singing together, whatever it may be, there are so many really curious and interesting uh, groups of people coming together all around the world. So can you find your tribe in that kind of space and may you be healed and may you, may you come out beautifully blossoming into your divine nature um, as the world is ready to embrace you and love you exactly as you are. So that is my offering. Thank you. Now, Martha, thank you again for bringing this together and making this all happen. Thank you. Thank you, Julia. <laughs> I think everybody made me cry. Every single person. <laughs> oh, my. Yeah. Um so I just, before I say what, what is coming through for me, I just wanted to mention Don, um, last weekend I was up visiting some of my clients locally and, um, I was walking on their property and guess what I came across? <laughs> yep. There was a baby rattlesnake and you know, there are gopher snakes here. 
typical to see that, but a baby rattlesnake, never in my life. I've never in my life come across a baby rattlesnake. <laughs> um, and so I thought of you and I stood with the snake and I just, I just was with present with it for, you know, a minute and yeah. So I'm still sitting with that, but I really, that, that clearly happened. Like it's, <laughs> clearly that was part of this and part of whatever this is in general. So yeah, just wanted to presence that. Um, so then in terms of what I'm feeling called to share today, um, it came through so clearly and so persistently starting about a month ago that what I was, what I was being asked to share is um, what the spirit world has been channeling through me about the remembrance, the importance of remembering our original ancestry. So I'll say a little bit about that in a second, but this morning, what got me crying before we even got on this call was that I realized, okay, I'm being asked to talk about remembering our original ancestry. Today is my grandfather's birthday. <laughs> wow. All right, then. Um, and my grand, both of my grandfathers have been really, really, really present with me on a personal level. I mean, they're both no longer in their physical bodies, but over the last year and a half, about a year and a half, a little more than a year ago, my own, my own father died. And since then I've been on this really, really, really deeply profound personal ancestral healing journey. And my two, both of my grandfathers have been a huge part of that healing for me. <laughs> um, and uh, one of the most, I wasn't actually going to talk about my grandfather, but I realized it's his birthday. So I'm going to just say a little touch on him. And then I'm going to talk about what it is I'm being asked to talk about. So one of the most healing moments for me was last summer. I, after I had, I had held the rebecoming the one symposium and aspect most, most of that symposium was absolutely beautiful, amazing, et cetera. But a part of it was very, very difficult for me. And after I finished, I went up to visit my, my two aunts and I was staying in my aunt's house and that, that house, I'm going to have to say this without crying, but <clears throat> that house had originally been my grandparents' house. So I was staying in the in a bedroom and I came across this manuscript that my grandfather, whose birthday it is today, had written when I was 10 years old. And it was it's about 80 pages long and it's titled Letters to My Grandchildren. Yeah. So I spent most of the days I was there visiting my aunts and my cousins in bed in my grandparents' bedroom reading these letters from my grandfather that he had written, you know, 37, 36 years ago or whatever it is. Um, and it was the most healing, powerful. It was precisely what I needed in that moment. And it just was there for me. So today I'm being asked to talk about remembering our original ancestry and it's his birthday. <laughs> wow. Um, so yes, so in terms of the original ancestry, what what I feel called to say about that is um, a few months ago, I actually channeled a guided meditation to for anybody who wants to actually experience that remembering of your original ancestry. I channeled this and I've been asked to put it on my website for free. So it's available for free and the link is here for anybody who wants that full experience of it, but I'll just speak a little bit about it. Um, so what came through, through for me in that is that we have this concept of ancestry, like my grandfather, like our grandparents, like all of the, the beings that we know of and don't know of in our lineage. And a lot of us are being called to do ancestral healing of various kinds, which is beautiful. I mean, absolutely wonderful. And, and what we know is that when we go into our literal actual ancestry, there's, there's a mixture of beauty, unconditional love and all of that, like I felt with my grandfather, but also very, very difficult 
traumatic things, right? I would say it's probably true for all of us. That's probably some version of a mixture of that. Um, but what the spirit world is emphasizing is that one component of what we all have in any moment and that we're taking with us at any moment as we're transitioning into this new age, as we're transitioning, making any kind of transition, we always have with us what they are calling our original ancestry. So what that is, the way I can describe that, um, but it's way better explained in the channeled experience. Um, it's the way I feel it. It's like the, the ultimate truth is that we are source and and we incarnated into the time space continuum and 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 i you know the way i experience it is that we've had kind of infinite lifetimes in the time space continuum and that that those lifetimes have included our literal dna ancestry but but in the beginning of time and in the beginning of space so on the the sort of like the membrane of the totality of the time space continuum there's this energetic that i feel is maybe saturn and pisces kind of energy if that makes sense where we are source but we're choosing to take form and in that original moment of choosing to take form we are pure unconditional love in form that then comes into form and lives all these existences right and so this original ancestry to me is like it's the vibration of pure unconditional love that comes before any experiences any karma any kind of good or bad or indifferent experiences we've had through all lifetimes and yet it's 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 not just us as source it is incarnated energy it is form but it's pure love in form so that's my offering and um yeah it, it, it it's connecting with that personally in addition to these other ancestral healing experiences i've been having i mean absolutely has revolutionized my life on so many levels so i offer that and offer for you to take it in whatever way feels right for you would it be okay if i comment on that martha yeah of course yeah oh yes um just from witnessing reiki healers connecting with people who don't feel like talking about trauma and what 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 is bothering them feeling into physical body and commenting a lot about how how weak the energy is in the legs and it's usually with people who never, um, who are only starting their healing journey and who never really addressed their ancestral connection because they're aware of how much trauma there is. They feel kind of unsafe to connect there. So I believe the message that you shared may really be profound and transformational and for them to give themselves permission to connect with the frequency of the ancestors and know that they are connecting beyond the trauma that was in their lineage. They are able, with that pure intention, to connect with that unconditional love and infinite wisdom that is in the original ancestry lineage, so that the legs can start feeling stronger, so that the energy can become alive in their body, and connecting with the earth as well, and expanding and transforming their lives. So thank you for that. Mm. Well, yeah, and you're reminding me of something else that popped up for me because what was so interesting is what well, my free channeled guided meditation actually is linked to one that julia just put out also on ancestral healing we're on the same page with this um and and what what just clicked for me this morning is that on a um on in terms of the stars the series series right now it has been trining Jupiter and is moving into square the nodes and we'll be squaring the nodes during these eclipses, actually opposite Estrella. Um, but Ceres is going to go retrograde in Capricorn and is going to be squared by the nodes actually for a bunch of months, if I'm remembering this correctly. So we, I feel, and actually it'll be with Pholus and Quawar and uh, on and on. Right. But 
but I've been kind of curious about that presence of series because I noticed it, but I haven't clicked in, grounded into why it's so significant until this morning, until all of you were sitting here talking about the great mother and bridging our relationship of sky and earth and this unconditional love and Ceres and Capricorn coming into our roots and our ancestry and remembering the love, the unconditional love of our, yeah, all of it. It's just, it's right here. <laughs> it's amazing. So beautiful. Okay. So you feel ready to close? Shall we? Yeah. Great. Um, I just, can, can I just say one more thing? Yeah, before? yeah, no, go ahead. Yeah. It's just an emphasis. It's not new, mm -hmm. but I'm picking up on um, what Melanie said and also Julia. For years, I've gotten an image that um, the way we're going to heal is by circles of people at overlapping circles so that it ends up just in, encompassing everything. And and it also speaks to, so so I would encourage everyone to find, like you did, Julia, find circles, you know, and when whatever forms you can to be a part of, because we can't underestimate the power of what that is and how that's going to heal everything. And it takes, starts taking the place of the institutions that have so taken our own individual uh, wisdom of what we know to be true inside ourselves and tried to make us uh, adhere to what they thought was the right way, which is external, not internal. And where circles, when you're they're held in, like you were saying, Julia, in the in the energy of acceptance and love and and unconditional regard, things are healed in in multi level levels and multi layers within the being and within the soul and in the dimensions as we're doing it. So to know that even when we have a circle like this or any other circles that you're a part of, we are healing outwardly all over kind of like endra's net which has been so, uh, you know an image for me for a long time so it, any small amount that seems seemingly small connection like that it's big so you know join circles i have one more kind of no, cautious ca cautious awareness message for those in particular who are only starting their healing journey it uh, if you come across a group and your physical body is giving you an immediate sensation in your belly area where ooh, something feels off, something feels heavy. Be like, thank you so much, um, dear guide. Uh, thank you for these alarm bells. This is not my group. And you simply remove yourself and keep looking for your group that will, where your physical body will will open up and and invite that frequency in. Your body knows. So just watch out for that. And, and don't um, underestimate that that um, natural alarm system that is that is inside your being because sometimes our mind is like ah no I'm pro probably just projecting or you know and we try to really go in there deeper and deeper don't just uh, recognize the inner guidance and the wisdom of your body and just keep looking for the group where it feels expansive and light-hearted that's your group mm -hmm. I hope that helps beautiful and I would just, before we close, I'll just emphasize that you're in a group right here by listening to us, actually. And so, you know, this video is on my YouTube channel, Julia's and Heather's. And please, absolutely, please engage, share with us what is alive for you as you're listening to this. Um, we are holding you. You are part of this with us. And that is the entire point. And your voice is needed truly <laughs> so that yeah just want that to be a huge takeaway um great all right does that feel complete and ready to close now okay <laughs> okay okay so again everybody every single one of you listening every single one of us here on the actual screen I would invite us to all feel us in this beautiful divine web that we literally are part of together. 
their own lights that we are in this time of a great sacred remembering and coming into the remembering of the wholeness that we truly actually are and a remembering of all the gifts that we carry that we have and that we are as we are in this present moment and as we move into every moment <clears throat> And I would invite us each and all to now release anything and everything that is not in our absolute highest radical good in this given moment, even if it was something that felt wonderful, but if it feels not in absolute radical highest good of yourself or of the all that is, just let it go back into source itself. It's always there as source doesn't actually go anyway anywhere we can release it out of your own being and then we can allow to anchor in anything and everything that is in our absolute radical highest good and in the highest good of the all that is and i invite you and each of us to feel completely surrounded and held in this moment that we are held in this divine web this divine grid of light we are surrounded by the presence of each other the circle infinity we are surrounded by spirit allies earth allies our benevolent ancestors our original ancestry and we're surrounded by the unconditional absolute complete inevitable true love of existence love of the divine and the pure love that is each and every one of us thank you so much everybody who's here on this call every single one of you who's listening you truly are needed truly are a blessing and so it is Blessed be. Amen. Thank you. Much love.